Welcome to Inside the Film Room. I'm Kristen Erg alongside head football coach Will Healy. Coach, your team had a chance in the fourth quarter to win the ball game. It's the second straight week of playing FBS on the road, tough environment. What's your analysis now that you've had a chance to watch the film? Still about as frustrated as I was on Saturday uh, because you have chances to win that football game. Uh, a couple different times, even in the fourth quarter, when you have the ball uh, and, and you can make it a one-score game or you miss a field goal and you do some things to shoot yourself in the foot, we've got to correct those things. We can't keep coming back here and saying we had a shot but we didn't get it done. Uh, there were glimpses of unbelievable performances. Um, I thought the third quarter defensively we were lights out. Uh, I, I thought that we didn't execute on the offensive side of the ball as, as well as I would like. Um, but, you know, I, I think our guys played really hard. Uh, we've got to be a little bit more consistent. And uh, we played a really good football team on Saturday. You know, I, I think they'll have a really good shot to win the MAC. Uh, we we uh, went in and got to see a little bit about what we need to fix moving forward, but uh, excited about being back at home this week. The defense played phenomenal. You mentioned it in the third quarter, holding it to negative one yards. Were there adjustments made at halftime as far as going into that third quarter? Those guys played lights out. Uh, I, I think it's more of a mentality by our kids. You know, I, I think our coaches had really good adjustments going into the game, and I thought we, I felt good about our game plan. Um, I think we played with a little bit more energy and enthusiasm, and, and played a little. You know, a little bit more team defense and, and rally to the football a little bit better. Obviously, creating the turnovers is huge. We've got to continue to do that. Um, but I thought, you know, we showed what we're capable of doing on the defensive side of the ball in the third quarter, and, and we've got to do that for four quarters. Let's talk offense. You lost your starting quarterback, Javon, correct to injury. Jeremiah Oatesfall came in, tried to get into a rhythm. What's your analysis now that you've had a chance to look at the film? Well, we think he's really talented. There's no doubt about it. If we didn't, we wouldn't play him. But we can't put the ball in jeopardy as many times as we did. We were actually fortunate on a couple that the balls weren't intercepted. and um, So he's got to keep becoming more and more comfortable with what we're trying to do on offense. Uh, I think we're going to simplify some things and make sure he feels good about what we're doing. Uh, make sure that we cater our offense to what he does really well. Um, but, but obviously we feel good about how he's progressing. I thought he, he seemed cool, calm, and collected. Um, and then I, I think he's just getting better each and every week. So excited about his progress. Obviously, we got to get Javon back. We feel a lot better when we have both of them versus just one. Uh, but, but proud of what he was able to bring. He gave us a shot, and that's all you can ask for. You've talked this week about putting a complete game together. What things are you guys working on toward that goal? Well, the same things that got us beat, beaten week one got us beaten week two. That's the frustrating part. Turnovers killed us. Penalties killed us. Uh, I thought we added some special teams mistakes that made that thing get out of hand and look really bad. Um, so we got to work on communication on, on, you know, especially kickoff return right now. Uh, have to make sure that guys are continuing to buy into their roles on special teams because I think we've got really good athletes back there returning kicks. And if we can hold on a little bit longer, I think we can create some big plays there. Um, obviously, defensively, a communication, um, you know, trying to make sure that we're getting aligned properly, um, making sure that we're rallying to the football and, and doing more of what we did in the third quarter. And then offensively, I think it's just a little bit of calming down and, um, and getting the ball in the playmaker's hands. We, we've got enough talent over there. Uh, we got to make sure and, and scheme for success and make sure those quarterbacks are put in posi positions where they can be successful and that they're comfortable with what we're trying to do. So the nice part about it is everything that I'm frustrated about, they're all things that are fixable on our part. If we worry about us and we take care of those things, and uh, then I think we got a chance to be a really good football team. It's no longer to the point of where you just got outmanned and, and beat. Uh, so we gotta we gotta have a little bit of sense of urgency this week and get those things fixed because they can't cost us three weeks in a row. I was listening to the ESPN broadcast. They were very complimentary of the governors, the progress of the program. They talked about the off season and the weight training and where you've been and where you are now. They talked about playing in the fourth quarter with FBS opponents. Uh, does it help? when others notice the governors are on the brink of something special. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's flattering, you know. Um, 
I think anytime somebody notices the steps that you're making, it makes you feel really good about your progress. Um, you know, obviously, watching what Cincinnati did on Saturday versus Michigan and having chances late in the game to, to go beat them, it makes you feel good about how you played and competed against Cincinnati. Miami of Ohio is a team, like I said, that we expect to have a shot to win the MAC and should win eight or nine ball games this year. So uh, we've played two really good football teams and had chances to win two really big football games. Uh, so I think our kids are confident in our ability to play with people, uh, but it's not just about being competitive. We got to go win some football games, and and uh, and to do that, we have to stop having so many self-inflicted wounds uh, that have cost us the first two. You're working towards that goal. What's happening when the cameras are off? Our kids work really hard. Uh, they believe in what we're doing. Um, I think we've got great coaches. I think that the relationships that our coaches have with our kids is really special. There's a lot to me that goes on behind the scenes of how we run a program, uh, what's important to us that, that's not caught on camera but is really why we're doing it. And uh, our kids believe in our philosophy. They work extremely hard. Uh, there are so many different times, whether it's in a football game or whether it's in the season or whether it's in the off season, that these kids could have quit and reverted back to old ways. Uh, but they haven't. They've worked harder and harder, and, and uh, you know it's time to, to get paid for some of that stuff. So uh, you're teaching them about what it's like, and uh, you know how to win football games, um, how important some of the little things are whenever you get into close football games, and that's what these kids came here uh, to do: is to have a shot to win against really good football teams. There are no cupcakes on our schedule, so we'll have to play really well each and every week to have a shot to win. Um, but we can't keep doing these things to ourselves and, and making, it, making life harder than it should be. I know Governor fans are ready for Saturday. All right, coming up, it's the Fuse Fireworks Assistant Coaches Corner. We go one on one with Brandon Cooper. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's the Fuse Fireworks Assistant Coaches Corner. I'm alongside Brandon Cooper, defensive coordinator. Coach, you're well respected in this league. In the OVC, you won a conference title as a player and as a coach. You've accomplished what you are driving these young men here at Austin P to do. How does that experience help you now? Uh, that experience helps me to help these guys understand that it's a process first. Um, they got to understand that it doesn't happen overnight. Um, Rome wasn't built in, in a day, so why should this be any different? Um, trying to teach these guys how to love one another, I think that's where it starts at. Um, I think if they understand how to love one another, they become selfless. You know, that's kind of the team mentality, become selfless. And through that selflessness, they then sacrifice things that will help them be successful on Saturdays. This past week, your defense ranked number one in total defense. What a different storyline than a year ago. Talk about that progression from last year to this year. I think the first thing is that uh, we're a year older in the system. Uh, being a year older uh, slows the game down for the guys that are returning. And I think on top of that, you add some, some upperclassmen, whether junior college or transfer guys, uh, to your defense, now you have an experienced defense as opposed to a team full of true freshmen. Um, I think on top of that, in the offseason, we did a lot of self-studying, and Coach Healy, you know, he, he emphasized that we had to make them smart football players, smarter football players, and we also had to be able to take the football away more, you know, and protect it. And I think defensively what we did is we, we added some accountability to our turnovers, uh, whether it be gases for not getting them or whether it be push-ups for not having attempts. Um, those type things we're stressing more in practice this year, and, and it's starting to show on Saturday. Now, when a fellow coach turns on the film to prepare for you guys, what do you hope that they say about your group? First thing I hope they say is that they're disciplined. Uh, those guys, are, they're always in the right place. Um, they communicate, they get lined up, they're doing things the right way. Um, also, we hope we put some panic in the offense. You know, I hope that they say that, man, this defense, they're aggressive. Um, and when they get there, they're violent. You know, so those are things we emphasize with our guys that we got to continue to get 11 hats to the ball every single snap. You've molded young men. At a prior stop, uh, you helped a, a young man become an All-American into the NFL. Why do you choose this as a profession? I choose this profession because growing up, I didn't have a father around, um, and coaches bridged the gap for me. You know, those guys helped mold me into a man, um, and I do the same thing. You know, every guy that I touch or I, or I coach, um, I want to make them a better person. I want to make them a better man. So um, for me, I get satisfaction out of seeing those guys graduate. I get satisfaction out of seeing those guys accomplish their goals and do things that people told me they couldn't do in life, um, whether it be on the football field or, or off. Who is your mentor in life? 
My mentor, uh, football-wise, is Chris Boone. Uh, he gave me my first opportunity uh, to coach football, and, and I fell in love with it now. Um, on top of that, you know, I kind of look up to, to, to Nick Saban and Bill Belichick, the way those guys get their guys to play defense each and every week, um, year in and year out consistently. Those guys, um, they're at the top of their leagues, whether NFL and college. Those two names ring bells defensively everywhere you go. It's going to be fun this weekend. All right, up next, the Bojangles player spotlight this week is Jason Williams. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Bojangles player spotlight. I'm next to Jason Williams, defensive end. The defense has been the talk of the town this season. You guys have stepped up and given the team a chance to win ball games. What's different this year? Uh, one big thing, I think, is that we had a whole offseason up under our belt with Coach L, an uh, incredible strength coach. He's uh, prepared us um, in incredible ways, and we got some guys from JUCO that um, helped us out in the safety position and defensive line position, and I think that's helped us tremendously on the uh, defense side of the ball, also being a closer as a defense and being more of a one. You had a great game last game, mm -hmm. big sack, forced a three and out situation. Walk me through that play. Um, well, I told my teammate on the sideline before that, before that series that I was going to hit him with a spin move, and uh, I've been rushing outside the whole game. Kind of set him up for it, and I uh, did the spin move, and the quarterback was right there in my hand, so it was an exciting play for me. Pretty special. Now, the newspaper did a story on you last season. Mm -hmm. There was a quote that just stuck out to me. You said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. The more pressure, the more I can grow and be a better person, teammate, and be coachable. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with that? Um, well, I'm a very analytical person, and uh, I was taking uh, a class last year, and we went over Socrates, and he said, one of his quotes were, if uh, the unexamined life is not worth living. So I'm very, uh, I'm always examining my life, make sure I'm moving forward, trying to grow as a person. And um, I've been doing that my whole life. It's funny that a quote replied to me before I heard about it. So that's what, how I kind of got to that mindset. You haven't been handed an easy road in life. Mm -hmm. The current situation of you and your teammates turning around a program is kind of like the history of kind of what you walk through. Um, tell me what's been what your situation has been growing up? Uh, well, growing up, I have eight siblings total, six sisters, and two brothers. And uh, growing up, we were, I grew up uh, in a uh, poor situation. I, I grew up in poverty. And my older siblings, they uh, went to go live with their grandmother and uh, their dad. And the youngest one, the younger ones, including me, was stuck with my mom. And we uh, we lived and we lived with her for uh, and up until I was 11. And we had some family situations going on. Of course, you can understand, like being a single mom, having six kids is uh, incredibly hard. And uh, so my younger siblings, they went to go live with their dad. And I didn't know my dad. And uh, I went to go stay with a family friend. And things weren't going our way. And, and it was only temporary, temporary, but I ended up going to foster care. And when I went to foster care, I was in there for three to four years. Yeah, some, something like that. And um, that was a tough, that was a tough situation, very lonely. Um, my family was, on, was the only thing I had, so that being stripped away from me was very tough. And uh, I moved in with the Williams family uh, when I was 13, going on 14, and it's been a, uh, a great story ever since then. So You walk in day one to this amazing family that just gave you love, right? Uh -huh, and yes, ma'am. just accepted everything about you and uh -huh. supported you. How, mm -hmm. What ways have they supported you? Uh, in every way possible. They, ever since I stepped in that door, I never left, which was a great thing. And uh, they supported me in football, school, track, um, when I was in high school and everything. The most supportive people I've ever met in my life, so. You made a choice not to feel sorry for yourself and mm -hmm. you just maximized any opportunity that came your way. A lot of people in your situation mm -hmm. wouldn't do that, haven't done that. What advice would you give someone that may find themselves in what you went through? Uh, well, being in foster care those three years really showed me how to lean completely on God and not having my family, not being able to just to lean, on pe lean on people. So leaning completely on God helped me get through it. And also a big quote I love is from Eric Thomas. He said, um, pain may last for a minute, it may last for an hour, or it may last for a day, but eventually it will subside. And um, I realized that, that um, sooner or later this pain is going to end. It took three years, but uh, I, I kept pushing, I kept going, and uh, I got to the light it in the tunnel so you're from Alabama trustful Alabama how did you That's end right. up at Austin P well um, recruiting process was kind of uh, rough for me at the beginning and uh, I was going a, a dream school of mine was Auburn I was going to go walk on to Auburn and uh, play there but then coach uh, Marcus West uh, defense coordinator here and defense line coach he called me and uh, 
said he had something for me. He told me he was coming to Austin P. Of course, he's at Chattanooga before he came here. And he told me that uh, he was coming to Austin P. He's offering me a scholarship, and I was uh, uh, completely grateful for uh, offering me that scholarship. But I was kind of hesitant because they hadn't won a uh, game in so long, and how the uh, how the program was and how the culture was here. And uh, I came on my visit, and it was ama it was amazing the uh, the vibe I got from the coaches, the players, and uh, them ready to move forward. And I felt like uh, I prayed about it the night before, which is crazy. I prayed about it on um, Thursday night. And Friday night, didn't get to see the whole campus, and uh, I committed that Friday night. Just felt like God told me to commit. This is this is where you need to be, and that was that's what led me to uh, be here, at Austin P. Was it a good decision? Best one, the best one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. So wow, you're an inspiration. <laughs> yes, All right, thank good you. luck this weekend. Thanks, Jason. Now we coming up. We talked to Coach Healy. He talks the home opener. You're watching Inside the Film. We're back on Inside the Film Room. Jason Williams, we just talked to him. What a story. How has his character and perspective on life helped your football team? What an awesome kid. Um, a lot of our kids have great stories and backgrounds for what they've had to overcome. Um, I tell them all the time they're either a statistic or a story, and there's a lot of reasons on why they should fail. Um, whether it's what's happened back at home or whether it's an injury or whatever it may be, and I think the success story of Jason Williams is what it's about. Um, you know, we've known and recruited Jason for a long time, even back to our days when we were at Chattanooga, and um, to see his energy, his passion, his leadership ability, his work ethic, um, and, you know, and, and his athletic ability, really. I mean, you know, he's a guy who started for us as a freshman last year. We expect huge things, huge things out of him this year with rushing the passer, and um, you know he's he's a great kid to be around. Uh, never has a bad day. Always has a smile on his face, and uh, you know if you had 105 of them, you'd feel really good about your football program. Absolutely. You mentioned uh, you've watched film on Morehead State. What can we expect from them on Saturday? Well, I think there's a. Um, misperception that because they're a non-scholarship football team that they don't have good athletes. They have great athletes. I've played a lot of these non-scholarship games whenever I was at University of Richmond and uh, they find ways to get really good athletes. They have 12 transfers. They have four preseason all-conference guys. Um, I think they're, it starts with their quarterback much like it did for Miami of Ohio a week ago. I think he's tough, throws the ball well, really good athlete. Uh, they got some receivers that are really good weapons. The tight ends made a lot of big plays for them this year. Um, you know, defensively, it's three out of their four guys in the secondary are, are preseason all-conference ki uh, kids. So, you know, they're big and physical up front. Their two linebackers, I think, are really good players. They are, have a really good football team, and they've won some games. It's been historically, you know, uh, over the last 15, 20 years, it's been a really top-notch uh, program. So I know they'll be really competitive this year in the Pioneer League. They ran into a really good team last last week in Liberty, um, but they competed really hard. You can see huge improvements from them from last year to this year, uh, much like I hope he would be able to say about our football team. Uh, so it'll be a really tough test for us. I, I'm excited about the challenge. Uh, I know this is a game that they probably had circled for a long time. And uh, I, I know our kids are going to have to match and surpass their intensity at home. Your team hasn't played in front of the home crowd since November 12th of last year. That's a long time. How ready are you guys to play in front of Governor Faithful? So ready. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the excitement, the buzz, the support that we've had from our community and our fans has been exceptional. And, um, you know, even after week, week one, you just can't wait to get back home. So. We're really excited. I, I think home field advantage is huge for us. I think we've got one of the best atmospheres in FCS football. I know our fans are excited about it from what they've said, and, and uh, I think our kids are ready to be back at home too. So look for an exciting atmosphere at home this week. How important is the home atmosphere for your football team? I think it's really important. It's a lot of fun, and I, I think we do it right. Our, our home atmosphere is, is awesome. Um, you know, it starts with our guys are able to stay in a hotel the night before the game, which is, you know, we're one of two in the OVC that does it, one of very few in the FCS football that does it. So they're treated right, they eat right, they sleep right. Uh, you know, then you're at the Gov Walk two hours and 15 minutes before the game, and we've had a lot of success with that. There's been a lot of people in Tailgate Alley that have, uh, have been able to greet our team as we come in. You know, we're going to add the band and the cheerleaders to it this year, where it should be an even better environment. 
Uh, and then you're able to walk out on a field where you put a lot of hard work uh, in the off season, in the spring, uh, and in practices during the fall. So it's a rewarding opportunity for us. I think our fans had a really good time, especially as the season went on last year, and we were competitive in some games, you know, the TSU game, the Mercer game, a couple of those games late, where we saw what that at atmosphere should be like. Uh, but it's a lot of fun for our guys to play in front of the hometown. I, I think it's a chance for our fans to get to come out and see firsthand uh, what this program has done over the last year, how much we've improved, and uh, you know, and it'll be a great env environment. So it should be a really good crowd. I, I would encourage everybody to come out and uh, make sure and, and uh, tell these kids how much you appreciate what they do. What's going to be key to have success on Saturday? The same things, you know, the, the turnover margin I think is huge. Uh, we got to win time of possession this week. Uh, make sure we, we've had some penalties that have killed us in crucial situations. Um, you know, obviously special teams is the third aspect to every game, and, and we have to win the special teams battle. But we got to play like, like our hair's on fire and like we love playing the game of football. I thought we did it week one versus Cincinnati. I thought we weren't quite as consistent with it against Miami of Ohio last week. We got to have a sense of urgency on Saturday. We're going to play a really good football team that will be ready to, ready to play. Uh, but we have to have a lot of fun playing football. And uh, I think the environment will be great. I think we should have a really good crowd. People around here are excited about it. And it's time for us to go uh, to go prove where we are. All right, make sure to join us at Forterra Stadium Saturday at 6 o'clock. For ticket information, head over to letsgop.com. As always, there'll be live tweets and highlights on social media at Let's Go P. And join us for post-game coverage on Facebook at Let's Go P. Thank you for watching Inside the Film Room with Coach Will Healy. I'm Kristen Ergel. We'll see you next time.